But down here, it's going to be one, two, three straight, Sandy, Utah. Why? Why would I have anything more? So you don't have the owner's name on it? Yeah, I don't. But why? In case someone else is so, there. Someone else might be living there. <clears throat> exactly. If it's a renter or somebody else gets it that actually um, doesn't own the home, or if it says Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the person who lives there is getting a piece of mail is not going to open it. But the main reason they're going to open it is why? Handwritten. Can you put resident? For a I wouldn't because it's you, you're trying to give the yeah. illusion that it's yeah it's, it's it's it needs to be something that really causes them to go into the property that it's for them right. The curiosity is going to yeah the curiosity. So why Who's put the Century Twenty One? Why not just Rick Bentley? You don't have to put Century Twenty One, but I want them to know start getting in their head what it may be. They see C Twenty One, they're going to start thinking, huh? What is this about? Advertising. Yeah, is it after? What is it? I'm, I'm trying to get them to open it up, but why, once they open it up, why are they going to look farther? Why are they going to continue to look for it? You know, you know why? Something interesting. Well, look, I don't care if it's a renter, if it's, a, if it's the homeowner, no matter who it is, the reason they're going to look at it is their house. It's a picture of their house. Right? So it's going to cause them to look farther into what's going on. They're going to open it up. Down here is where you put your message. So whatever that may, may be, free CMA, or I may have a buyer for you, call me. Whatever your message is going to be. But here's what starts happening. They're going to go to the next lender, or, or the next piece, which is the lender letter, which is called action. So, Rick, come on up, and I want to introduce why this is so important to actually use your lender in making this happen. The call of action letter that Rick has is um, what comes next. So you're going to take the listing. You're going to take the lender letter. Now, the question was asked, why is the lender and the agent not on the same letter. Can anybody tell me why? Say that one more time. Why is it that the lender and the agent are on one paper? There's something to do with law. No, Say that again? No, no nothing to do with law. It's all psychology. Oh yeah, you don't want them thinking that you're a lender? No. Not that either. You want to separate the two? You want to separate the two. That's that's the very reason. But why do we want to separate it? And it really deals with sales resistance. Okay, people who are looking to either refi are going to call the lender first. But this is the this is the call to action letter. That would you read it to them? You want to read the whole thing? Just sure. read what what you think is perfect. So, dear homeowner, interest rates are still hovering around historic lows. Is it? Uh, it is true the rates have moved up a bit over the past few months, but so has the value of your home. If you have been thinking about selling your current home and taking advantage of equity you have required, now might be the best time to sell and purchase a new home. Many clients can sell and move up to a bigger home without increasing their payments. Clients have also could move down into homes that are more comfortable for their needs. If you'd be interested in no cost, no obligation review of your current housing situation, please contact me by phone or in or, uh, or email. So, yeah, so what really what we found in, in creating this process is that they're more comfortable at times to call the loan officer to get the qualification process going. Part of his job is to kind of bring it back to us. So that a lot of times he'll probably get him or Chris will probably get a phone call before you will. Okay. So it's being able to separate the two so they feel comfortable. Because after you, know, you do this mail out, you have the call to action letter. You know, really the idea is with the equity out of this property and, and the interest rates, which from five years ago, what were interest rates five years ago? 5%, 6%. So with the difference, if they haven't gone in and refi, what are interest rates today? 
three and seven eight. Three and seven eight today. Is there a better qualification process for them with that interest rate? So you're looking at, at a better interest rate at three point seven eight five percent. Eight seven five. But you're good. That works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have a better interest rate than what they actually originated this between uh, uh, five actually and six percent. How do I know? Because mine was done that long ago. I was at 6.5. So I know with the interest rate conversion, the extra in equity, I can actually afford a much nicer home at approximately the same price. So that's part of what their job is, is qualifying with them and saying, hey, did you guys realize you can leverage into a property that grows faster in value? Doesn't everybody want something better? And if you got something that's going to grow faster in value, it's all in how you communicate with them. So your effective rate is going to be in how you're communicating back and forth. And if you guys got uh, questions as we move through this, stop me. Can I just add something? Yeah. So our whole goal, you guys, is not to get refinance clients through this. Correct. Our whole goal is to get clients back to you to, so that we can give them an idea. A lot of people, you'll be surprised, a lot of people are not aware of how much their homes have gone up in value. They just yeah. aren't. So what we're trying to do is get them back to you. We can tell them rates are great, but you really realize what the value of your home is. Is this your dream home? Is this your end? and home that you want to be in. So our whole goal is to pique their interest, hopefully get them to either call you or call me, and then I refer them back to you so we can obviously kind of double team them. Yes, ma'am. So um, if everybody in this room does that, right. and they all send out your letter, yeah. how do you know? How they're going to differentiate? How yeah. you're going to know? Good to question. So the key thing is hopefully, hopefully <laughs> unless you have some other suggestion, is you guys have put your name on that envelope, right? Century 21. So one of the first questions out of my mouth is going to be, oh, who'd you get the letter from? And hopefully they'll have the envelope still, unless there's another way that you can do that. There's, a, there's actually a good ex thing yeah. for that. So what happens when you do this print? I'm going to go ahead and show you how to actually do this entire process. What happens when you do a client full report? It takes your name and puts it in right at the top. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to ask that. Do we slide? I didn't know if you would suggest sliding our business card yes. in the envelope yes. or printing it on the bottom of that no. CMA. No, what you want to do is it, right here it has your name. Even if you want, go in and highlight it. I mean, it's a good idea to highlight it just so they don't miss it. Because people, what they're going to focus on seriously is this. Why? Because it's about them. It's not about us, it's about them. So they're going to focus on that and they're going to start saying, I don't care if it's a renter or who it is. And then they have the letter, which is going to allow them to call Rick or Chris and say, hey, I got this. You guys have a letter you sent with this mailing I got. And I was just wondering, you know, about refinancing or yeah. leveraging into a new home. You know, wouldn't it be nice to have them call you up six months from now off one of these you've done and have them say, hey, I got a buyer for you. They're all ready to go. And I'm going to show you how to do that demographically. So I just want to make sure, because I, just in, for clarification, so you have two different pieces in this same mail. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. CMA and yours. So the CMA of, of which property, though? Their own. Their own. Their own. Yep. Okay. It's their prop. It's the target okay. market Perfect. property. So it's the homeowner that's potentially looking to sell. It's not a full CMA, right? It's no, 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 no. Okay. You're not doing a CMA. Yeah. This is nothing more than a printout of what you're going. And I'll show you. It'll make more sense once I start doing this. But I wanted to really. While I was waiting for Russ, I'm gonna have Russ come up here in a minute and explain percolation for you. And that process, but this creates that process. Peaks their interest. It peaks their interest. It gets you know these internet leads that everybody is getting. This is how you get in front of it, and it's cheap, really cheap. The only way it doesn't work is if you're not working it. Because the next phase in this, after you have this, if you're trying to drive this two ninety nine buyer in the same area to a property you have that's listed for 350 
to 400, you put that in with it also. Because you're taking all of those mailings and pushing their, their, their focus on this new property they can buy. So it's a way of exposing your listing to a ton of people. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be our list. You know, I did this mm -hmm. on a, a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> you also don't you also have to go into the home that you're trying to drive them to. You have to go back five years on that home because if you're looking at 299 homes there and the home that you're trying to drive them to was worth 305, then you need to go under. Well, right? well, here's what you do. Okay, so I did this with Clint and Andy when the, when they were fairly new, and the house was three or seven, was it seven ten or something like that? I can't remember. Is that the new house or the old? This was the listing I had. So I put a listing in behind every one of these. So this seven hundred thousand dollar home, and down at the bottom they stated Saturday. Open house and drove every one of those people. So we had two properties, one which was Lee's on the other corner, about 100 or 1.2 million, and Leah Kruger had one up on the other street at 725, I think. We had 23 couples through, they had two and three couples through. So this is a great way if you're going to hold an open house, hold an open event, okay? Because you're going to mail, you're going to do a demographic report of 100 of these. So you're going to have 100 of these behind this and 100 of these in your mailing. Does that make sense? Any questions? Or I just want to clarify in case in case I'm wrong. Okay. I did this. You and I did this. So on the sheet that you sent the client, which is their home, oh, their home, the listing that you're pulling up, the client, the full client report, is the the MLS from when they bought it. Yes. Not from you're doing a CMA for today. Or no, thank you. The actual listing from five or ten years ago, or whenever it was that they purchased that home. Correct. The sold listing. The sold listing from when they bought it five years ago. Or back. Okay, so what if it was a home that they built? Then they wouldn't have bought it from someone. That is yeah, probably not going to be in your mailing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking, I'm using the MLS to leverage the information out of the MLS. Because when I'm talking to people about listing their homes and they say, well, what do you do to sell properties? Well, you're seeing what I do to sell properties. It's called target marketing based on demographics to the most likely seller group or buyer group. So you're leveraging the information we out there based on what? Buyer behavior. We're also going into buyer human behavior on it's handwritten. You're going to open it. Now you're going into, well, that's my house. They're going to look farther. You're going to come down here. It's either I may have a buyer for your home. That's what you just got. Somebody called you same day, right? Same day. Like 30 minutes after. 30 minutes after. So, at this point, I want, Russ, if you'd come up and actually talk to them about that process, the percolation process, because it's really important to understand why this works the way it does. So, basically, you can erase it. So, basically, think of it this way. What I'm going to just draw out real quick is the process that somebody goes through before they buy or sell a house. So regardless of it's a buyer or a seller, there's three phases that they go through. So the first phase is what we call percolation. What does percolation mean? Just thinking, thinking about it. Just thinking about it. So part of what Rick wanted me to talk about is explaining this because the fact that they end up getting this in the mail has could be the thing that actually starts this percolation process. So the, before anybody ever buys or sells anything, uh, real estate wise at least we're talking, they're going to go through this percolation phase where they just think about it. So the fact that you drop this off to them may be the thing that has them start the percolation phase. After percolation is what we call information gathering. 
So the information gathering is now where they start to gather information to make the decision of whether they're going to do it or not. And then the final phase is active. This is where they're actually going to go out and do it. They're going to list their house. They're going to go buy a new house. So what the reason of this, of going and doing all this, is you're knocking on the door, mailing this to them, may be the thing that starts percolation. That may be what has them start to think, wow, maybe we should look at, at doing it. So keeping that piece in mind that you may be the reason they start to percolate. Yeah, thanks, Russ. I appreciate that. So you may be you may be getting them anywhere in this process. It may be here, it may be here, it may be here. But here's the reality. How many people really remember who their realtor was after five years? They don't unless you they don't, right? Unless you've really kept in touch with them. So you're basically hijacking everybody's sellers. Okay, and it's a great way to build your business, but you have to work it. Because what comes next is once you've got this campaign mailed and you're doing it to, I like to keep it around 100 people. And you'll see why. Because I'm doing 100 mail out each time I do a target marketing campaign. Whether it's to an SOI target marketing or it's leveraging to a listing I have. Because if I have a, a property out in Magna that's listed for $200,000, Okay, I'm going to go into a $150,000 neighborhood close to it, do a target marketing campaign, and draw people to that, showing what they can do. And I'm going to include that listing. It's precisely what we did here. And we actually ended up selling it because of this program. That buyer actually ended up having their own realtor, and that's the problem sometimes. But it still got this property to go. And we had 23 people attend an open house. That's phenomenal. So the next phase that comes once you get this put out and mailed out, what comes next and why? Phone call. Thank you. Door knock. So Andy, come on up for a second. For what? <laughs> You're the sucker. He's the sucker. I want you to door knock. Oh, and you you know, so doesn't it, doesn't so good. So good. He's a yeah. professional role player. Yeah. He had no idea I was going to do this to him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, no, Timmy. All right. Knock, knock. Oh, hi. Andy Schoenfeld with Century 21. How are you doing today? Good, Andy. Good. Hey, I actually mailed you a, a listing about your property here recently. Um, wanted to make sure that you got it. I did. Yeah. Fantastic. Any questions about what we sent for you? Oh, uh, that's interesting. Um, what do you think we can get out of this? You know, that's a great question. I like uh, the reason I'm here today is to set an appointment for us to come back oh. and actually go through your property real quick uh -huh. with you about what it's worth and what it would sell for. Part of that, though, while I'm here already, would it be okay if I take a look at your home? Yeah, room? sure. Great. Yeah, great. I don't know where you want to go. Now, so that's it. Yeah. Sure. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. 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 So. I'll, I'll tell you what, it can be that simple, but it may be, no, I didn't get it. Why? You want to you grouch enough to him, though. I wanna, I wanna well, wait, here's what I'll tell you, though. If it's a person that's ready to buy, if it's a person that's ready to buy, I'm telling you right now, it's sometimes easier than that. I've had them go, it's you. Why? Because I've gone there. They got my mailing, they didn't answer the door, I put my card in the slot of their door. Do you think they know who I am at this time? You better believe You've it. Pestered enough. I pestered enough. Because part of the process of doing target marketing is how you work it. And this is where a lot of people start failing, is when they start marketing the property. When I am doing the process of target marketing, and this is my first target, this is my second target, this is my third target, and so on. Okay, the way I do that, because each one of these are a hundred mail out, right? Or more. How long can it take you to knock a hundred doors? Oh, yeah. Blue, how long? <laughs> That's one day, right? Two hours. Two hours. Not Hold on. It's how you handle it, okay? I'm telling you what, I have agents in this company that are doing three and four hundred doors a day. That's a fact. You know where this falls apart? 
agents not knocking doors. This is a door knocking campaign. This is a prelude to the door knock. And you have the leverage of the lenders helping you leverage that. Remember, it's starting the percolation stage. You show up to help answer the questions. Very, not very often are you going to get, hey, call me, I'm ready to go. But you've got the same day. I've listed and sold properties that way. So many you can't believe it. Because here's what happens. So I knock this, I mail this. As I'm done knocking this, I go, uh, I'm done knocking here. I start knocking this and as this one's bound. And then I come back here, re-knock the ones I'm really interested or didn't get a hold of, and then I go to this one, and then back to this one, and then back to this one, back to this one. You see what I'm doing? So it's revisiting the door, especially those ones I want. Yeah. Why? Well, is it a listing you want? These people are either going to call somebody else or start asking for more information. Why? They're in the information gathering stage. You have to be there working the system because you've already started the percolation with this. You're, you're getting them interested if you're leveraging towards something else they want. They're going to check here to see if they can qualify. And with the X, you'll see when we pull some of these up, some of the dollar per square foot, foot that'll shock you. They're like, holy cow, there's fifty, a hundred thousand dollars worth of equity. Would you say it's better to include a property than not? Regardless, maybe even if it's not your listing, maybe someone else has a listing and go ask them, yes. hey, can I put this in here and market it for them? Yes, and why is that? You know? It just gives them a like, dream, an idea. Thank you. Okay. We're dreamers. Information. We want something better. Because one of the things we learn in role play on a door knock is to change one thing about your home, what would it be? Everybody wants something nicer. It's human nature. So if you're including something they could buy and get about the same payment, the question really becomes, why wouldn't you? Especially if you can come in and give them what? Free CMA. Or if I may have a buyer for your home. I mean, but you have to work the system. It's not like, I'm Melvin, I'm done. I've had people come in my office and, it doesn't work. Great, tell me what you did. Oh, I did everything. Okay, tell me more. What'd you do? I mailed them all out. Great. How many doors did you get? Three. <laughs> what do you mean you worked it? You're wasting your time if you don't knock the door. Now, you might get lucky six months down the road because I have. There's a reason you stay around if you're... So in Sandy, and I'm going to show you... My house sits right here. My first target market is right here. Why? If I'm sitting on my back deck on a Saturday drinking some iced tea and I happen to get a call because somebody went into the activities mode, I'm on. I can be there in a minute. But if I have a house in Draper, And I'm in Sandy, it's not far. I'm going to still do a target market campaign in that general area. Because remember, it's pushing people to that property or to that open house. It's being able to make that leverage the MLS from wherever you're going. Because you who are veterans in this business, every home you've ever sold up to, I think, 98 is still on the MLS. What you're going to do is hijack somebody else's client. I know that's a bad word, but it's a good word in this scenario. Because they may not remember who sold them the house, but it was your listing. You can go in and put listing agent. I can bring up almost 300 properties right now. Every one of those homes I sold. I can send this plus something like this. And I've got calls. I got. I had somebody come in my office one day and challenge me. Show me how to do it. You do it. Let me see the results. Got eight buyers on my board from it, and three sales listings sold. So I've done this for a long, long time—about 25 years. So 
the system works. So what I want to do now is actually walk you through the system and how to leverage the MLS. If you have a computer, pull up the MLS so you can walk through it. If you have a question as I start do, doing this, come on, come back. Did it just disappear? No, it's back now. Okay. <clears throat> Stop me if you have questions. So how you leverage the MLS and how you use this tool to make your MLS better than anybody else's MLS, this is where the sizzle is in the program. This is where you can get a major difference in being able to leverage when you're talking to people, you're in a listing presentation, stating that, look, they ask you, well, what do you do to sell properties? Well, that's a good question. I do target marketing based on demographics to the most likely buyer groups or seller groups. That's something I can show you when I come by. Fair enough? And that's what you'll do. So as you do this, what you want to do is come up here and search. You're going to come into full. <laughs> you waited too long. Right? I know. You know me as an expressive. Yeah. I was trying to make it a sign. Okay. So you want to go into the full search. Okay. You want to get rid of active. Go down to sold. You want to come all the way over to this little gear right here. Click on historical data. Okay? Look how many possibilities there are. It's staggering, right? So that's just entirely too many properties to go in and uh, make that happen. So the next thing we're going to go to is uh, city. Where's the city? So, to your right. To your right. right there. To the right. There county. Okay, here we go. So I live in Sandy, so I'm just going to pick Sandy so I can show you how to process this. So even in Sandy, look at the potential of the, of, of the people that are actually there who actually have sold and property. So, the next phase is you want to go all the way down to the bottom. This is extremely important. And we're going to go to the sold date. Go to the farthest to the right. You're going to tap in here like 2013. What, expired date or sold date? Sold date. What am I on? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we don't want that. Thank you. I should have brought my glasses down. <laughs> you should have screwed up. I can tell everybody else to do it. Right? <laughs> so look at the possibilities. There's 24,606 potential target markets, which is a little ridiculous to think you're going to send that many mailings out. So what you want to do is go up to map search, search map. Yeah, you're going to go five, five year back or more. So I'm going in the MLS and leveraging Clear back. Why? Because I'm looking for that equitable leverage, right? Those people who are in that process of a growing family, a life change, something going on that's different in their life. Those are the people I'm targeting. Because remember, we're taking a psychological journey with these people and trying to trying to leverage in what we believe they're going to do. So as you go to search map, it's going to ask you, jump to Sandy. And we say yes. Look at the map that it gives you. It gives you a map of Sandy. My suggestion is, is that you print this out on the biggest, biggest paper you can. Because this is how you're going to track your target campaign. You can uh, go to Sandy. So I have a map of Sandy. Thank go you. to Sandy City. It's 25 bucks and you get a poster. And it'll have all the streets and each individual lot on the street. Right there. Yeah. And that's what I've got. And I got little pins. Where did you get that? Sandy City Hall. You have to, there's a guy, he's got a Russian name, I can't remember what it is, but um, and I don't know that he has them ready for you. You probably have to call ahead and just ask and they'll have them. But I think it was 25 bucks. Any of your city municipalities will have a division that can print you a map of that city. 
if you're going to do your campaigns and you want to put it on a work board like I've done, you can actually track your campaigns with the little pins. So my house is just off 106 South and 7th East, so it's right in here. So what I do is I would target a property closest in that area. And I'm going to mark that on my map. I'm going to come up here, I'm going to take the uh, marking tools, and I'm going to, providing this thing will let me, Shakier than I am. Okay, so I'm going to block out a demographic area. We ended up with 110 in that short neighborhood. Okay, so 110 potential target markets. This is your door knocking area. So you can either expand this map and print it. Or when you're when you get farther in this, I'm going to show you to do a brief report and print out that brief report so you can track what doors are target doors and what doors are not. Because the conversation can be different. Okay? So then you're going to come up here and you get a view. I'm just only going to go a couple of Now you get these that don't have a picture in it. Sometimes I don't even check them. It's up to you. Because remember, the picture is one of the things that get them to, to really look at it and become a part of it. Then I'm going to go to Client Full Report. Okay? So that when you do this, look what it does at the top. It actually puts your name at the top. Your oh phone God. number. I know. That's why I said <laughs> your number, Russ. So make sure you use my... You, you make sure you use <laughs> Russ's login so that he gets the benefit from it. So the nice thing is when you print this, it gives you the small margin down at the bottom. Right here is where you put your message. It gives you everything you could possibly want. Look what this sold dollar per square foot, what it was listed for. $79 a square foot. What's it going for now? Over 100 so that we know when we leverage these guys with the lender, we know what they could potentially do unless they refi out. So you put in sold date. Do you have an area that you did the five to ten years back? I'm not sure. Because I can see this is 100, uh, 2004. Yeah, I'm going back as far as I can. Oh, okay. Because frankly, I don't care who's in the house right now. I really don't. Look, the psychology behind is it is, is that their address, it's a handwritten letter, and next thing they open is, I don't care if it's been sold. I'm using this just as a tool. Okay, so that, that was my next question. So when I've been doing this, I've done a couple now. And I'm getting, so each property in the MLS is coming up as, it's the same property, but it's a different MLS number because it was sold by a different seller. Frankly, so I don't that, care. How do I, is there a way to get that out so I only have one listing yeah, there? See, part so of I'm not have to self yeah, go through and do it? There's times that I've actually multiplied the Mellington properties to annoy people, but they really know who I am now. And I'm okay with that. The, the idea is being able to use the information, because look, I had a guy that sold his house three months later. I made him 80 grand. Because I included him in this. He goes, it's crazy, you just sent that. He says, I'm moving back to Arizona. I need you to list my house. Would have anyway, but my point is, is I really don't care whether it's been relisted and sold 10 times. It's information I'm looking for that I can send them. Because I'm going to go knock the door. I'd rather them have a prelude to my door knocking than nothing at all. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm going to include it down here is where I'm going to put the message. Because it's safe to say after about three years, they still don't remember who their agent is. And I've gotten a lot of listings that way. So what message are you going to put in there? Well, it, it depends. I mean, I, most of the but time... You've got to handwrite it, right? Yeah, you've got to handwrite it. I, it's personal. Remember, it's a psychological journey. Now, the way I do that, I'm so glad you brought that up, because who wants to write out 100 or 150 times, I may have a buyer for your property, or call me for a free CMA. Take a blank piece of paper, write your message on it. 
put all of these in the printer. So the prints it on everyone in a few minutes. Okay? Then I hire my niece to go ahead and stuff everything for me. <laughs> the lender has the letters, they'll print the letters for you. Okay, and then you might take a listing, like, like what you're saying, Andy, as far as if you have somebody in the office you want to, if you come to me and said, look, I want to do a target marketing on your property. Can I make a flyer and put my name on it? Yes. When we go door knocking and a flyer door knocking one of my listings and someone else goes, we put their name on the Of course. That they have out. Absolutely. Chances are they're going to call you to sell that property, to sell their property and buy that one. Because remember, you're selling dreams. So so it doesn't this. even have to be, I mean, if you do a target area, you probably want to do it where you have a listing, but let's just say a new agent doesn't have a listing, they can do it with a company listing. Yeah, yeah. as long as they get permission. And yeah, get permission. Yeah. Yeah. There's plenty of sure. agents in the, in the office that would love you to do this. Sure. Okay, so you put your message right here and you pull them out. So what happens next is after you print all 110 out, is you're going to go back up to here and come into the agent reports. You're going to go brief report. You're going to print this out. Okay, this is how you track. So when you're out door knocking and you know you come up to 518 East, 110th South, you're going to record the response at the door. Either it was a good callback, comeback, presentation. Um, or nobody answered. So that when you come back to that target market, you're going to be able to say, this is one that didn't answer. Or I have one that's set. Or they're selling in six months. Whatever the case may be, you're going to track it on that. that. This list right here becomes extremely valuable because it's a working list. If you think of the percolation to information gathering to activity, that's that's quite the process because you may just starting that today, but it may be six months to a year down the road that you actually get something from this particular mailing. But if you go back to the the campaign, remember there was almost thirty thousand potential targets in Sandy alone. Every person in this company could do Sandy alone. And never run into each other. So you're going to track where you're at and what you're doing. Typically, I like to see it around an area you really, really know a lot about because people will start asking information and you need to be intelligent about where you're at. So, make sense? Questions? How often do you re mail? So, if you're going to go there, you mail them, you're going to go back. Before you mail them, you're going to re knock the door, you're going to the third area, come back to the first area. At what point do you remail that the same, same area? area with the same <coughs> deal? Or do you? I, I typically haven't because I haven't found a need. I'm moving toward, because a lot of people will mistake this for farming. This is farming. Farming is beating the death of neighborhood over and over and over and knocking it until they chase you off the doorstep with a bat. It's not this. We're looking for those people who are ready, willing, and able now, who have a desire or a need to move forward now. Or you're selling them on the dream of a better home, a nicer home, leveraging for almost the same amount, same payment because of the equity. I don't care if our market slows down. From $76 to a square foot to 120 is a big difference. Unless they've refied, there's room. They're going to have a lot of, 95% of all people right now have the ability to sell their home and, and leverage equity into a nicer home. Okay? They just don't know it. This is a program designed around being able to show them what they can do in that process. Make sense? So how many times do you go back to number one? I'll go back. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump back one, one time. Just once? Just once, and I'm leaving a card again. And that's when they go, you. Okay. Yeah, it's me. One list. So, so what, one mailing and two door knocks? One mailing, two door knocks is typically what I do. 21. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, so what other questions? Um, did you explain you how to do a list? Uh, like a short? The brief list? Yeah, is this the brief list? This is the brief list. This is your tracking. 
Now this is going to be 110 on the printout. That's your tracking. And you know, you're going to find out that out of 110, who in here can tell me what the hit ratio is maybe on that? Lou? Five listings. Five listings. Which is what? Out of 100 homes? Out of 100 door knocks. Out of 100 door knocks. Yeah. I mean, she's good. But well, she is. She's very good. She's really perfected the process. So what I'll tell you is that if you get in, and this is a prelude to it. This is just setting the stage, and they're starting to think. It's not uncommon to get a phone call six months to a year later. Hey, I got your mailing a long time ago, and I just haven't had a chance to call. Can you come and talk to me? What's your message you're sending? How are you visiting that area? So, any other questions? Do you want to tell them how we're involved a little bit more? Yeah, a good, good point, Rick. I mean, here, here's the reality. These guys understand the target marketing very well. So your, your job is to do the reports, put the, the letter together, get the letter from them, bind it, they pay for the postage. Ooh, so they're, they're, they're teaming with you guys. You get with these two. They're already set up to where they're going to help and leverage with you. So also, if they're financially involved in this, they're going to be asking you, did you door knock? It's vital that you door knock. Okay, and they're going to be accountability with this in getting you to door knock and get the, get the campaign out. So uh, get with... Uh, these guys have already agreed to do this. So you need to be reporting to them and back and forth, and they're going to do the same. This is a team effort. I just want to make sure you So that you're not so assuming there's going to be less people at home. Mm -hmm. You send all this out, and that's wonderful. But is there something you can leave behind that, other than just your cards, that might be even a better, more. Yeah, Daryl, I think that's a great idea. I think you can go in and do a number of things. What have you guys been doing? We just leave a card, or we'll leave uh, a word door knock for a listing. We'll leave the flyer at the door. So another another flyer. Yeah, for the listing that we do. Yeah, but we door knock for the open houses and all that, doing the same thing. So. Yeah, I mean, here's the other thing. It's not too uncommon for you to leverage. Say you did this area, you got two or three listings, and you put two or three listings in that campaign because now you're going to go to a little bit inferior neighborhood because you remember you're selling dreams again. You may, to answer your question, do you ever go back? Yeah, because they overlap. Like, I think Josh Madsen, he spent, like, the first six months, once he got one sale in one neighborhood, and just knocked that neighborhood, and he ended yep. up with... Five or ten. You know, a lot of listings out one neighborhood. Absolutely. So you, to, to, to answer that question, you may hit a neighborhood again because you've got another listing in that area. And remember, you're going into those those smaller areas and pushing up to that higher priced property. And that's when you're going to hit it again. So in those cases, I would and have. Be, just because of what it was. Like the one for 710, we were quite often in areas of you know, 450 to 500,000 range, because their next step was the seven to eight hundred thousand dollar home. And believe me, when you start showing those kind of properties, you're like, heck yeah, I'd like to have that. The people sold the 450 to buy that. They got our mailing, called their agent, listed it, and put an offer on the home subject to their selling. They priced it because this was priced well. They sold theirs in two weeks and then closed on ours. Like that, one meeting. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so what are you, what have been your your messages that you put at the bottom that has piqued interest huh? from the to, from the percolation to the uh, I may have a buyer for your home. That's just real simple. Real simple. Don't overthink it and don't oversell it. And we, we, you might put, we may have buyers for your home. And do we do relocation and all the other? Absolutely. So it takes me longer to knock doors than it takes you. Oh, yeah. They, and I'm wondering how you knock doors so quickly. I must talk too much. <laughs> or if they're not at the door, maybe I'm standing at the door too long waiting for them to answer before I slip my card and move on. I love what Lou told me one time um, when I asked this, how are you doing? And 
she had stated, I decide in a minute or two whether I want to carry on the conversation. Because you can really tell by the way they're engaging. So if you're there trying to sell them, you know, 100 pound weights when they're looking for butterflies, it's not going to work. You need to judge it in a moment and move on. So, make sense? Yeah, I, yeah, I think the more you do it, you're, you're fine that you're going to, oh, well, geez, I, I've done it this way, it's not working. Maybe I had to cut the conversation. Well, you may not it. want it. You may not want You might be creeped out by it. Okay? Is that fair to say? Yes. yes. Yeah. I don't know if anyone asked this question yet, but from what I noticed, we do not hire area homes. We just have uh, my personal experience, like more difficulties actually, like scheduling appointments is due to the fact like, oh, I already have an agent, there's like 500 realtors in this neighborhood, I'll need your help. But would you recommend then just focus on an area that's less service, like lower end, or would you still recommend to stay on like the upper? Yes. End? Yes, to both. I've had different campaigns in different areas. I like to diversify. I like to be down in the lower area just because that's my bread and butter. But I really like those big dimensions, right? Yeah. So, to, to answer your real question is really, is your skill at the door? That's the reason we have role play every morning. Okay, Lou Tran did not miss a day for the probably first six months to a year in role play. Did not miss. She becomes so good she shut George Morris down in one. So, the reality is what are you doing to increase your ability to do uh, objection handling. Every single morning up here we practice. Unless I've been hit by a bus or something, I'm here. Or if I'm on vacation. <laughs> but you come in and improve your skills. Yeah, what happens when you, I mail this out and go to door knock and we'll walk up and see no soliciting on the door. Oh, yeah. what, said no soliciting. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Didn't notice. Didn't notice. I'm not soliciting. Oh, I'm not soliciting. Yeah, I'm not There's soliciting. Like I'm offering. Yeah. yeah, it happened to me yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, I'm not supposed to the law on that. I'm not supposed to. You know, I just, for me, I decide based on if I care for the yell at me. I'm not removed to be the yell at. I just take right. the door. It's yeah. exactly what I do. I'm not really, I don't, I like the house. My, you do decide. The, the reality is, is that most 90% of the time, they're nice. And I'll tell you this, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person or the right thing to the wrong person. Does that make sense? If they have a need and they got your mailing, that's another reason why this process becomes so valuable because it sets the stage. It, uh, it sets it into motion, starts the percolation stage so that you have an easier time at the door. That makes sense. Are you correct in saying you're not soliciting and that you are just going and seeing if they're looking to sell their home? Of course, I'm asking so the buyer. Right? I'm asking so the buyer help them. You know, look, you're not you're, you're not trying to sell them anything. I'm following up. Yes, you're not you're not you're not selling them toasters, are you? You got a vacuum in your bag? Yeah, I do. I can vacuum my truck. What you saying, dude? The vacuum in there. I got the Kirby's right there. Right. You're not selling them anything. Okay. So you're not soliciting. And I'll tell you this: don't overthink that, because it's not an issue. It really isn't. And if they say something to you, go on. Lou, have you had many? <laughs> you say it, huh? What about you, Andy? Yeah, I got people pretty. Of course, angry. they do, right? Yes. You're going to get it, so I, 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 I don't knock them because I just don't. I knock them. For me, if you're that worried that you go buy a sign that says no soliciting, I don't want to deal with you because you'll probably take the butt. And most That's just my show. opinion. I just don't. So know. I just you want one I did? But I could be wrong. They probably have great needs. I was real arrogant one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> and I went like this. Guy goes, what do you want? I'm going to sell your house. Slam. I thought, you son of a gun. So I went around to the back door and I went, <gasps> he comes and he goes, are you serious? I go, if you're the same guy that was at the front door, you know, you were really rude. <laughs> really where I went at, you know, I'm trying to support a family and I just want to know, do you want to sell your property? Do you know anybody that wants to sell a property? So I even got it in. And it didn't go so well, but 
I don't suggest that. I go back to the front door and he comes to the shop. I felt better walking the hall. <laughs> You're just having a bad day. Tolerate to it. Yeah. Any questions before we close this out? Okay, great. Yeah, Lou. I suggest that if you a woman and if you don off, I suggest you should bring someone. Thank you. Yes, because there are creepers right in there. Do you like the door to the side of the street that we all know? I I I like them on the other side. I have a guy that come out completely nude. And then I'm sure and I was like, okay, you know. I have like guy the other day he also got beat by a chisel. No, I was I was yeah. got attacked by a chisel, you know, so I mean, when you down up with like someone oh, yeah. around you, yeah. it's more safe because you don't know. You can at least yeah. safety in numbers. I had a lady walk out of the shower and open the door. Oh, she right. was a stripper and she goes, I usually get paid for this. I'm not going to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a murder. I didn't bring a woman. It was a murder. Yeah, protect me. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Oh, no, there's some women I wouldn't tangle no. with. Yeah. <laughs> What's her name? The girl you see girl? Rousey. Oh, I can't my back. I can't run. <laughs> so anyway, look, if you guys have any questions, please get with me on this. This is a real simple process. Get with these guys, get their letter, team with them, and let's make this work. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I love you. Oh, you hear that? Chris is willing to knock doors with you. All right. Look at that. Well, so, so, uh, so, 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 so,